Hey, race fans, this is Chet Christner with your Comp Cam's top five moments on flow racing from this past week. Macedo going to take a shot into turn number one, looking down low. Sanders beats him off of turn number two down the back stretch. They drag race into turn three. Macedo's got it. Sanders slides right back underneath him. They trade the lead. Pitcher bugs into turn number one. A little bit of contact there, and Macedo's got it. Carson Macedo takes the lead. Our number five happens at Tulare Thunderbolt wearing Kings of Thunder 360 action. Justin Sanders and Carson Macedo waged an epic battle through lap traffic. I can't even begin to tell you the number of lead changes before Carson Macedo finally came out on top and took the victory at Tulare's season finale. But if you want to know for yourself, you can go back in the archives and try to count them. Good luck. Anywho, sprints were back in action again on Saturday at Keller Auto Speedway and all was well until fog. A lot of fog. A whole bunch of it. It all descended down upon the land like a giant fun sponge and canceled racing for the night. Stupid fog. Oh, no. Friesen in trouble. Friesen. Our leader going into turn number one, Stuart Friesen in serious trouble. The Short Track Super Series journeyed south, way south, for a Cajun swing, and that's going to be our number four. Stuart Friesen's putting on a clinic at the Rev in Monroe, Louisiana, when disaster strikes. A broken hub catapults him into a ball of tangled and mangled sheet metal. Friesen, however, would bounce back on Friday, holding off Matt Shepard to take the win at Chatham, Louisiana's Super B Speedway. Shepard himself would then take the torch and go one spot better on Saturday, capturing the 20,000 to win mods in the Marsh finale. Meanwhile, Ryan Godown's two wins earlier in the week, which you can see those highlights on our Flow Sports app, along with podium finishes at the final three races, would earn him the overall Short Track Super Series Cajun Swing Championship and a guitar that he played with enthusiasm and fervor. As red flag will fly one car up and over big time going in to turn number one. One of the final events ever at Arizona Speedway, USAC's Western World is our number three. Emerson Axum kicked things off early with a wild wall banging ride to start Friday's midget feature. Justin Grant would duke it out with Corey Eliason until Eliason bounced and jounced his way out of contention, and Grant powers away and onto the point. Buddy Kofoid would then come to call, but the birthday boy, Justin Grant, would come away with the win at the ripe old age of 31. Sprint car action, Brady Bacon's up front when Logan Seavey throws a slide job that starts on the back chute and ends in New Mexico. Bacon was able to turn it back to the inside and come away with the win to clinch his fourth USAC National Sprint Car Championship ahead of Saturday's finale. Speaking of Saturday, Chris Winham entered the night tied in the national point standings with Buddy Kofoid, but a dominating win would send him on his way west at the top of the standings. Logan Seavey had all his ducks in a row in sprint car action, leading all 30 circuits of Saturday's feature to pick up a Western World win. And Bronson up there on the high side of the speedway where really nobody else is. I think that's going to play into his advantage. Oh, man, he smacked the wall right there in turns three and four. Sonoy Raceway in a Peach State Classic is the home of our number two, where in Friday's preliminary, Kyle Bronson sat his tush on the cushion, road to rim, sparks and all for 25 laps during $10,000 in the Peach Bowl. On Saturday, Bronson was again a favorite to win and slayed to roll off fourth, but it was not to be as a mechanical malady would sideline a 40B car. Mike Marler would lead the first 31 laps until Chris Madden hooked it around the bottom and onto the point on lap number 32. Madden would go on to lead the rest of the way, picking up a career-high payday in the form of a $52,052 check at the inaugural Peach State Classic. Good run down the back straightaway is Nipper. Nipper's got a flat tire heartbreak hotel for him. Haskins getting around him. Oh, three wide for the race lead. What a finish. Coming to the checkered. Oh, who wins? And our number one is restart with one lap to go for the 604 crates at Sonoy Raceway. Green flag flies and Jordy Nipper leads the charge down to front shoot. Nipper loses steam, however, and takes a shot in the shorts out of turn number two. And at this point, the rest of the field descends on him like a giant cloud of flying monkeys and they all pile into turn number three. Nipper digs and paws his way back into a three wide battle to the checker. And at that point, everyone commenced hostilities. Out of this dusty debacle, Jamie Marie squirts from fifth to first to pick up the win. And well, here, we'll let Jamie tell you how it all went down. Well, I knew everybody was going to die for it. They went in wide open. I said, you know what? I'm going to slow down just a little bit and watch it clutter. And as soon as it cluttered, I hit that traction. I rolled the inside wall and just floored it. And when everybody piled up, I saw that gap. I hit it. And we won, baby! Woo!